wherever did my fool brother run off to? I explicitly told him I wanted him here when we welcome our guests. It would seem Prince Roland shrugged off the King's Guard and went on a little excursion, as he's wont to do. I swear it's as if the boy exists to drive us mad. He is an embarrassment to our family. No matter. I will see to matters myself. Your honored guests have arrived, Your Highness. I see new faces among them. I trust you can tell me more, Clarice. But of course, Your Highness. The imposing looking woman over there is General Avlora of Esfrost. Her prowess in battle is such that some say she is the second coming of Groma Ironfist, hero of the Salt Iron War. If the rumors of her strength are true, she is more likely to emerge victorious than any but the Dawn Spear himself. Over there is Minister Exham Marshall of the Holy State of Hyzant. He is the newest appointee to the Saintly Seven and has been placed in charge of the military and diplomatic affairs. Tis a rise to prominence nigh unheard of for one so young. A general of the Grand Duchy and Hyzant's young hope. I imagine this will not be the last I hear of them. I know this man, Sorsley End of Hyzant, yes? Just so, my lord. As you doubtless know, he is the Holy State's Minister of Salt. A prestigious position, though it is said he feels threatened by Minister Exham of late. So even the great monolith that is the Holy State is not immune to internal strife. Thank you, Clarice. I can see they were not wrong to tap you to lead the consortium. As the officially appointed bookmaker for the tournament, it would not do for me to be ignorant of the combatants. Your Highness, Lord Thallus and Lady Erica, brother and sister of the Archduke, have arrived. They will be joining the festivities in Archduke Gustadolf's stead. Word has it that Lord Thallus has been appointed Prime Minister, which would make him the second most influential individual in all of Esfrost. Archduke Gustadolf is said to prize freedom more than anything. It would seem that includes the freedom to put his own family above all. With all due respect, Your Highness, the decisions of another nation are their own. Do take care not to say anything that might offend our new allies. You need not remind me, Patriot. I know there is little to be gained from quarreling with Esfrost's ruling family. Honored guests, I am Franny, Crown Prince of Glenbrook. It is an honor to welcome you to our kingdom in my father's stead. I can assure you we have spared no effort in preparing for tomorrow's festivities. Let us ring in this new age of alliance together. Though I imagine some may be too occupied awing us with their prowess in the tourney to enjoy the revelry themselves, Allow me to escort you to Whitehome Castle, where the ceremony will take place, whenever you're ready. Prince Roland, finally you return. At ease, Uet. 
I trust all was well in my absence. Well enough. Another visit to the Woolfort Domain, was it? Indeed, on minor business. My apologies for leaving unannounced. Apologies indeed. You know full well that I am under strict orders from your father to accompany you on any excursions outside the castle. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. Besides, no one would lose any sleep if something happened to me. Father and Franny least of all. Even Cordelia would get along perfectly fine without her brother. Well, I would not. Or have you forgotten that you are my one and only sworn liege? You at? Forgive me, truly. It won't happen again. I should hope not. So it is true that you plan to fight an attorney on the morrow. And alongside House Woolfort, no less. How did you... His Grace told me. When he commanded me to keep you out of trouble. <sighs> so Father knew all along. And so I have decided to fight at your side. You won't be slipping away on my watch this time. As you wish. Welcome back, the both of you. Were there any troubles while we were out? None to speak of, aside from Eridor here. But what else is new? Out with it, Benedict! I heard you were beset by brigands. Is the young lord safe? Lower your voice. Must you always shout so? Or can't you see that it was that big mouth of yours that invited trouble in the first place? There is no cause for concern, Eridor. Besides, I'm not a child anymore. Mayhap not, my lord. But I've known you since you were knee-high to a... Uh, never you mind. Hmm... <sighs> And this must be the young lord's bride-to-be. I am Frederica. It is a pleasure and honor to meet you all. And I am Gila, her attendant. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Allow me to introduce those in service of House Woolfort. This is Arador, Master-at-Arms and Commander of our military forces. You'll be the Lady of House Woolfort. No harm will befall you as long as I'm around. And this is Anna, my right hand. If you require anything, just say the word. They may not be of my blood, but they are my family just the same. And from this day on, they're your family as well. I am aware that in all of Glenbrook, House Woolfort is second only to the royal family in power and influence. I will do my best not to disappoint you. A joyous day this is! The little lord grew up and found himself the perfect bride! Nigh brings a tear to my eye. His voice certainly does carry. Sorry, my lady, but you'll have to get used to it. <laughs> My lord, your father awaits you in his chambers. As for me, I must stay and discuss the preparations for tomorrow's festivities with Anna and Eridor. Lady Frederica, pray come with me. Father is expecting us.
As you are well aware, there are two events of utmost importance to be conducted before Lord Serenoa and his bride are wed. The ceremony to commemorate the joint mining venture. Still can't believe I'll be seeing the day when we break ground on a new mine right here in Glenbrook. And with the full support of S. Frost and Hyzant, no less. You can thank King Regnet for that. It was by his most wise and generous proposal that the three nations of Norzelia now strive toward a common goal. Needless to say, delegates from each nation will be joining in the festivities. From the Grand Duchy of Esfrost, Lord Dragan Esfrost, who is overseeing the technical side of the mining operations. The Holy State of Hyzant will be represented by Minister Lila Viscraft of the Saintly Seven and our own Lord Simon will serve as Glenbrook's delegate and meet with the two before the ceremony, yes? Quite so. After that, it will be House Wolfort's responsibility to see that our honored guests feel welcome. Anna, I would trust you safeguarding both Lord Dragan and Minister Lila. Consider it done. Then once that stuffy ceremony is over, we can get to the real highlight of the day, the tourney. Ah, my blood's already rushing, just envisioning the greatest warriors from all the realm clashing swords. From Esfrost, the much renowned general of Laura. And from Hyzant, Minister Exham Marshall. I have heard much of his prowess as well. Then of course there's our reigning victor. The pride of Glenbrook, Sir Maxwell the Dawnspear. Still, I wish him all the best of luck against their hosts. They'll need it to beat House Wolfort. On that matter, there are two things I should make clear. Prince Roland has expressed a desire to join the tourney as a member of House Wolfort's contingent. Why would the boy want to fight with us and not his own arms master? Apparently, he originally formally requested to do just that, but King Regna would not allow it. And so he came to the young lord in hopes of finding another way in. Well, it's more than welcome in my book. The royal family said we're free to put together our own contingent after all. I reckon His Majesty would be beside himself with joy if we could deliver a beaten to Esfrost and Hyzant. Doubtless so. Very well. I shall inform the Prince that he is welcome in our ranks. Finally, there is the matter of Lord Simon's health? Indeed. Sadly, the Lord of the House is in no condition to participate in the tourney. Barring some miracle, I anticipate that Lord Saranoa will have to fight in his Lord Father's stead. Lord Simon. I suppose age takes its toll on even the mightiest of men. So be it then. You can leave watching over the young Lord and Prince Roland to me. Good. I remind you that while this is a joyous occasion, all of our attendees have their own reasons for coming. Let us not give them an opportunity to catch us unaware.
father, I bring to you my betrothed, the Lady Frederica. Pleasure to meet you, my lord. I am Frederica of House Esfrost. Ho ho, the pleasure is all mine. Were it not for the efforts of House Wolfort, the Salt Iron War would rage on still today. I do not deserve the honor of joining your esteemed family, but I will endeavor to serve you all the same. <laughs> There is no need for such formalities, my girl. You are tired from your journey, I am sure. Pray rest easy tonight. Thank you, my lord. I believe that in any journey, the first step is the most important. Before we go forward together, I should like to know why you chose to welcome one of Roselle in blood, such as I. Oh, I'd heard you were a strong-willed one. Pray forgive my insolence. Uh, and yet, I am set to marry into a mighty house of a foreign nation. I should like to know what you wish of me, that I might live up to your expectations. A most reasonable request. Both of you, listen well. Yes, father. Your marriage was agreed upon by Glenbrook and S. Frost, that the ties between our two nations might be strengthened. To give us more leverage against Tyzant with their monopoly over salt. Precisely. With Glenbrook and S. Frost consolidating their power, Tyzant was left with little choice but to join the Alliance. And yet, while Lady Frederica is indeed the Archduke's sister, at the same time she is the daughter of a Rosellan concubine. And House Walford, for all our military prowess, is no more than a bannerman of the King. If the aim was to forge the strongest bond we could between our two nations, it would be far more appropriate for my sister, Lady Erica, to wed the Crown Prince of Glenbrook. Just so, yet neither nation chose that. And do you know why? So that if relations between our two countries were to take a turn for the worse... We could be cast away like pawns. Precisely. Such are the schemes of those who rule nations. I understand now. And yet, no matter how impure the intentions behind this arrangement may be, I will not bring dishonor to the Wolfort name. Well said, my son. If that is your decision, then... Father! Lord Simon! <sighs> I am an old man, and my health is not what it once was. For this reason and more, I have made my decision. As of this day, I abdicate my position as Lord of House Wolfort. You will serve in my stead from tomorrow forth, my son. But, Father, I am not ready to... My decision is not made lightly. You have already shown me, with your words and your deeds, that you are more than ready. 
Think always about what your subjects need from you. Weigh your choices carefully, then take action. Do so, and I have no doubt you will make a great lord. And trust in Benedict. He shall serve you as well as he did me. Thank you, Father. I will spare no effort that one day I may be as beloved by our people as you. Lady Frederica, your fate is not a simple one. There are many who would try to use the both of you as pawns in their own schemes. Even so, I hope that you will be there to support my son through it all as his wife, but also as your own person. This is House Wolfort's entreaty and the wish of a father. Of course, my lord. It was my intention from the moment I boarded the ship. Beg pardon, my lord, but Lord Jagan and Minister Lila have arrived. Very well. Presiding over tonight's banquet will be my final duty as Lord of the House. Tomorrow's ceremony will mark the beginning of yours, my son. And after that will be your wedding. Rest well tonight, both of you, for busy days lie ahead. <laughs> Thirty years after the salt iron raged across Norzelia, a vein of precious minerals was unearthed in the kingdom of Glenbrook. From east to west, joy swept the land. United at last in common cause, the kingdom of Glenbrook, the Grand Duchy of Esfrost, and the holy state of Hyzant endeavored to wrest this bounty from the earth, with each nation providing expertise and resources. This uneasy alliance between once bitter enemies will herald a new era of tranquility in this long embattled realm. One after another, dignitaries from each nation arrive in Glenbrook to solidify this accord and toast to its success, the first step on the road to peace. Among those who would forge this road is Sarah Noah Wolfort. Inheriting the title of Lord Wolfort from his father Simon, he must decide what foundation he would lay for this new era. Welcome to Castle Wolfort, Minister Lila. Allow me to express my gratitude to the Holy State. Were it not for your nation's generous efforts, this venture would never have come to fruition. You are too kind, Lord Simon. You too have served an invaluable role in this. Though I must admit, the news of the union between your son and Lady Frederica came as quite the surprise. None in Hyzant considered that a bannerman of Glenbrook would join with the ruling family of Esfrost. I hear that Lady Frederica is the Archduke's half-sister. I must ask, how did this arrangement come to be? Oh, your curiosity is only natural. This union was promised during the war, an arrangement made with the previous Archduke. Truth be told, I am surprised one as well-informed as yourself did not already know. And this is your son? As I recall. Sarah Noah Wilford, 
at your service, Minister. And I am Frederica S. Frost. My son still has much to learn, but I believe this marriage will herald a bright future for us all. For today, I intend to step down and leave House Wolfort in Sarah Noah's capable hands. You're abdicating your position? Surprising news comes in pairs, I see. Nonetheless, I am happy for you both. I imagine the lords and ladies at tonight's banquet will take great interest in the new Lord Wolfort, as will I. <laughs> Pray, go easy on the boy, my lady. I hear that young Lord Dragan of Esfrost shall also be in attendance? Indeed. He has been appointed to oversee operations at the Grand Norzellian Mines. I understand his star in S-Frost has seen a meteoric rise. Good. I would like to hear more of this new explosive substance he means to use to blast the tunnels. As a fellow scholar of sorts, if in a different field, I am always curious to learn how great discoveries are made. He should have arrived by now. Has anyone seen him? Dragan's gone to see the city. He was halfway there before the gangplank landed on the docks. Ah, he is your cousin, yes? I see we share an innate curiosity for new places. The banquet will begin soon. I shall seek him out and escort him there. Very good. Though I will host tonight's festivities, I want you to act as if you're already Lord of the House. Our guests are the most esteemed personages of their respective nations. Take care not to cause offense. Of course, Father.
I thank you for your hospitality today, Lord Saranoa. Think nothing of it. Did you enjoy the city, Lord Dragan? Quite. Its people are full of life and love for their lord. That says all I need to know about House Wolfort. You honor us with your words. I am only being frank. Frederica is the sister of the Archduke, after all, and my cousin besides. I would not see her marry into an unworthy house. Suffice to say, my expectations were exceeded. I have heard much of your ingenious contributions to the mining efforts. I sense prosperous days are ahead of us. As do I. Finally, our nations enter into an age unfettered by war. With Esfrost's iron, Hyzant's salt, and Glenbrook's mediation, there is no limit to what we can achieve. We must regard each other as equals, and forge mutually beneficial relationships. I sense skepticism in your words, Lord Dragan. Do you mean to imply our relations are not already mutually beneficial? I need not imply anything. The salt tax you claim makes my case more than clear. Bold words from one so young. Is that how peers speak to one another? Perhaps the young ones, yes. What do you think, Lord Saranoa? Dissatisfaction with the salt tax was one cause of the war, was it not? Salt is a divine boon a gift from the goddess to her true believers. This is the foundation of the teachings that guide us in Hyzant. By allying with Esfrost, do you mean to gainsay our most fundamental beliefs? Of course not, Minister. We understand that the source is Norzelia's sole supply of salt, and we would not deny that it is the Holy State's right to harvest and tax it as you see fit. Thank you for acknowledging that. Though it strikes me that your words are measured. You needn't be so non-committal, Lord Saranoa. It is only reasonable that the three of us have differing opinions on the matter. However, that is all the more reason for us to be open to frank discussion. Hmm. Honored guests, <laughs> pray forgive my son. We of House Wolfort are but simple warriors. <laughs> I'm afraid matters of finance and politics do not come to us naturally. This, however, I can say. We will fight injustice and tyranny wheresoever it may be. Of course, we do not enjoy conflict. Still, we will not hesitate to defend our land and our people should the need arise. No matter how mighty the threat, we will fight for home and kingdom. Yes, Lord Simon. Of that we are keenly aware. I apologize if I spoke out of turn. But the fact remains that as every winter passes, the tension between our nations grows, and salt is the cause. The common folk have all but forgotten its taste. I simply want to ease their suffering. The ministry I oversee is committed to the preservation of life. I personally believe that salt should not be a luxury reserved for the privileged few. All those who live require it, not just those lucky enough to be born within the borders of our holy state. You agree with me, then? How I feel matters little. In Hyzant, the word of the goddess, as conveyed to us from the lips of the Hierophant, is absolute. But perhaps this joint mining venture of yours may lead to the change you seek. Indeed, we must set our gazes to the future. All of us. I expect you will be the ones to usher us into a new era. Yes, Father.
mother spoke not a single word to me today. Before long, I fear I might forget the sound of his voice. Please, sister, you weep and wail like a common girl. Show some composure. Father has a kingdom to rule, a kingdom engaged in a historic endeavor. He has more important duties than to pamper a spoiled child. I... Yes, of course, brother. You speak as if father's duties include anything more than licking the boots of these dignitaries. It is inconceivable he cannot spare the time to break bread with his daughter. You speak out of insolence and ignorance, Roland. I speak only the truth. He leaves all the cumbersome tasks to the Wolforts and Minister Patriot. A king's word is to be obeyed. And what of his subjects? Do they exist simply to bring him glory? To take the blame for his failures? They are to serve as he sees fit. The hell they are. Believe as you wish. Speaking of his subjects, it appears lordship of House Wolfort will be passed down to young Saranoa. What? How fortunate for you to have a friend in the new lord. Best not take loyalty for granted, however. House Wolfort is obedience enough for now, but that can change as quickly as the wind. Use them well when you can, but be ready to bring down your fist if they dare to rise above their station. Don't speak of them like lapdogs. They're not servants. They're my friends. Do you really think to lead with such a soft heart? You are not fit to wear the royal signet. Oh, stop this fighting at once. You frighten me. Enough of this. Where are you going, brother? To train with Sir Maxwell. I would clear my head. There is a tourney on the morrow, after all. Brother! <sighs> I yield. Your spear wavers, my prince. Something weighs on your mind. You've always been able to see through me. It's no great feat. Your heart lies ever on your sleeve. Do I hear disapproval in your voice? Not exactly, my prince. It can be a weakness, yes, but it can also be your strength. After all, sometimes a direct strike is most effective at piercing a formidable defense. I will take those words to heart, Sir Maxwell. Thank you for today. The pleasure was mine. I expect a good fight from you tomorrow. In the final match, no doubt. I take the field with House Wolfort. Together, I have no doubt we can emerge triumphant. Ah, that would explain your improvement. Young Saranoa is a worthy training partner. Even so, I have no doubt you've held your own against him. Tomorrow you shall show the realm what I already know. That you are a warrior worthy of your family's legacy. Sir Maxwell, I... Sometimes I wish I wasn't a prince. Sometimes I wish I'd been born your son instead. Surely you jest, your highness. Your father is a great king, and an even greater man. It is an honor to serve him as I do. Apologies. I forget myself. I must have taken quite a blow. Anyhow, I suppose I should rest till the morrow. Be well, Sir Maxwell. It cannot be easy being the youngest prince. To have others expect nothing from you, yet still shake their heads in disapproval. But you can rise above this, my prince. Seize your chance and lay everyone's doubts to rest once and for all.
Now that's what I call a feast. You've landed quite the catch, Frederica. He is a good man. I can see it in his eyes. You are too kind, Lord Dragan. And humble as well. Are you impressed as I, Frederica? I can tell that your heart is pure and gentle, my lord. Lady Frederica. Forgive me if I caused offense. I thought only to return your sincerity and kind. No apologies are needed. I am happy to meet your approval. I... Thank you, my lord. <laughs> Words come so easily to the both of you. And a perfect match. Forgive my curiosity. What sort of life did Lady Frederica lead in Esfrost? Her life? Truth be told, my dear Serenoa, not a pleasant one. Those of Rosellen blood are looked down upon in Esfrost, even if they are the daughter of the Archduke's concubine. Gustadolf's full siblings are the worst of the lot. They have not a shred of human compassion between them. They cruelly bully the girl endlessly, regardless of time or place. Is this... True? Of course it is! I know Frederica's suffering all too well. My own father lived ever in the shadow of his elder brother, the former Archduke. Our house, too, is met with sneers by those who consider themselves our betters. But no more! I shall show all those simpering fops that it is not birth that makes greatness, but deeds. And so I did my due research at the archives, that my grand invention shall blast our way forward. <laughs> Dragan, please. I believe you've had enough to drink. You can hardly blame me for availing myself of Glenbrook's finest libations. Brought by traders from the realm over. Each cask more exotic than the last. <laughs> Why, to not partake would be an affront to our newfound allies. Just make sure your head is clear for tomorrow. Or have you forgotten you're meant to be representing your nation? Mm, oh, yes, a, a ceremony to usher in a new age of harmony and prosperity. I am too young to have known the war, so I, I see our three nations joining hands more as a matter of expedience. But what of you, my kin to be? How do you see our grand cooperative venture? It is the first step towards true harmony among our three nations. I welcome it. I see. I admire your optimism, even if I cannot say I share it. I know that old grudges die hard. Still, I choose to believe we can overcome our differences. <laughs> Truly, a kind-hearted soul you are. And people are ever eager to follow a kind heart over a wicked one. Hmm, yes. I suspect it shall be your strength going forward. In any event, it is always good to have another... perspective on matters. Let me tell you what I believe. I believe we're on the cusp of a great achievement! 
As always, it is the young who must bear the burden of building the future. Hmm? Old shoulders are frail, old minds stubborn. Whatever lies in our future, those who make it will mark their names in history. And mine, mine will be written large for all to see! And I would write yours next to it, my dear cousin. Pray, come visit me at the mines once operations are underway, and I, I shall... Trigan, are you quite all right? Worry not, Frederica. I'm just a bit tipsy. Perhaps I should just lie. It would seem Lord Dragan has turned in for the night. Quite the passionate fellow, isn't he? He's never been one to hide his ambition, ever since we were little. Neither does he hide his disapproval of my brother and Trueborn siblings. Feelings which you share? I grant it would be satisfying to see the sneers of those who look down on me wiped from their faces. But I also agree with Lord Simone that we must set our gazes to the future. Though I know not yet how I might best serve in this new age, I would do what I can. We are of the same mind in that regard, my lady. Let us ease the weight of each other's burdens. Please, call me Frederica. We are to be husband and wife after all. Of course, my... <laughs> Frederica. Pray call me Sarah Noah as well. Uh, we should carry your cousin to his chambers. Will you help me, Frederica? Certainly, Sarah Noah. Let us take care not to wake him, lest he resume his prattle. <sighs> Benedict. Hmm. I thought I might find you here. My lord. Did you tell her? That Sarah Noah would soon be taking over as lord of our house. Forgive me, my lord. I did not think to... Save your apologies, Benedict. Doubtless she was overjoyed to hear it from you. Destra always did trust you above all her advisors. As do I. For thirty years you have served my house better than I ever could have asked for. You honor me, my lord. My lord? <laughs> I suspect this will be the last night I will hear those... <coughs> my lord, I will call for a healer at once. Uh, do not bother, Benedict. It will avail me not. You know as well as I how my heart now fails me. My lord. And so I entrust Sarah Noah to you. For our house. Pray heed this old man's final order. Certainly. I will live to serve your son until I breathe my last. Did you hear that, Destra? Our boy is in good hands. My old dear friend. Long have we stood together. I will not let you down, my lord. My beloved son, Sarah Noah, will oversee the matters of our house from this day forward. I expect you to serve him as dutifully as you served me. 
Of course, Lord Simon. I, my lord, our undying loyalty to House Wolfort. My son, listen well. A lord's judgment shapes the fates of his kin and subjects alike. Responsibility for their well-being now falls on your shoulders. You must lead them well. Yes, father. I shall keep those words close to my heart. To that end, I require wise counsel. Together, you possess a wealth of experience. As Lord of House Wolfort, it is my duty to consider the best course from every perspective afforded me. I shirk not from this responsibility. At the same time, I would be a fool to not seek guidance from those more traveled than I. For my house and my people, I trust I can rely on you. Well spoken, my son. I dare say you are more than ready to receive this. The Scales of Conviction, a holy relic said to be blessed by the deities of old. It was gifted to our family by the King of Glenbrook. From this day on, I entrust it to you. However, it is of little use without these. Coins. Seven of them. Tokens of conviction, we call them. Give one each to only your most trusted retainers and allies. They will guide you when the path is darkest. Their words will illuminate the pitfalls ahead. Heed well the advice of your friends and subjects and choose your steps carefully. Such has been the way of our house, and such you must see it always shall be. I will, Father. I shall treasure these gifts and make wise use of them in times of need. Very good. Now do your duty, my son. We await your orders, my lord. We depart for the capital at once. May this ceremony be but the first of many joyous occasions ahead of us. And so the stewardship of House Wolfort passes from father to son. Lord Simone Wolfort, beloved throughout Glenbrook, entrusts the future to young Serenoa. With the ceremony to mark the beginning of the joint mining venture and a tourney on the horizon, the Wolfort set forth to the Crown City. With no heroic deeds yet to his name, the new Lord Wolfort sets his eyes on the proving grounds, eager to show his worthiness.